like everybody. I have such a special treat for you today. I have my dear friend, Crosby Taylor, who is a celebrity health coach. Now that sounds pretty awesome. He's also a nutritionist and a model and he is the cookie genius. So they're <laughs> pretty awesome titles. It's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, pretty good. So we're gonna chat to you guys today about a whole heap of myths in the health world. And the first one I wanted to ask you actually before we dive in, what is the most common thing you see with your female clients? Ah, uh, female clients. I deal with a lot of, it's funny you ask because 80% of my clients that come to me are usually female. And the f number one thing when I see them, you know, when it comes to their skin and, and what's going on with their hormones right away, uh, right away I ask them like, are you raw vegan? Are you vegan? And all of them, it's almost like 90% of them are like, yes, or I'm at least a vegetarian or definitely raw vegan, like tons of them, raw vegan. And um, it can be really depleting over time. It's really cleansing for a while and you feel as high as the sky when you first kind of get into it and you're doing the juice fasting, you're doing the raw foods and all that, but eventually it really starts to cripple the body. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, we should definitely talk about that and how, mm -hmm. how they could help themselves mm -hmm. um, over time with that. Mm -hmm. Because I'm the same, a lot of my friends, a lot of my clients, they come to me and they're fully raw vegan. Mm -hmm. And like you said, it's an amazing tool to cleanse. Sure. And if you have something that you need to get out of your body, it's, it's an, an amazing catalyst. Sure. But sustainably, like it's not sustainable. What I found personally for me, I haven't been able, ever, ever able to sustain it because I've just been so depleted. I've had acne and eczema sure. and all of these things. So why is it that it's not working for so many females? And the, the biggest key, I think, to understanding everything about diet is balance. And when you look at a, a vegan lifestyle, especially raw vegan lifestyle, there's not much balance. I mean, everything's cold. I mean, you're not even, what, a raw vegan, you can't have soup? Mm -hmm. You can't have warm foods? I mean, what if it's freezing, you live in New York and it's December, like, are you gonna go eat a raw salad? Like, you're pushing yourself far out of balance in that way as opposed to like, being able to deal with the climates and the weather changes by, you know, when it's hot in the summer in, in Australia, of course, what, what feels good to you is having like a cold smoothie or like mm -hmm. a, a raw salad with like, you know, uh, arugula or some kind of romaine or something like that. But in the winter, you're going to be more drawn to these warm foods, these broths, these soups, these slow cooked mm -hmm. um, type, uh, you know, pot roasted kind of foods. And a lot of people, I think they get so um, obsessed with the diet because there's so many of these gurus out there that are telling people like, this is the way, this is the way, this is the way, this is going to make your skin beautiful. and and raw living foods the only way to go and they get so obsessed with this that they totally undermine their body and their intuition of actually looking toward something as simple as like weather mm -hmm. and understanding to bring some balance into that with food because food is really one of the main things that does for us is, is give us balance yeah. with our daily life so <clears throat> balance being definitely one of them when it comes to balance again uh, one of the main things I harp on with women is the hormones, your yeah. hormones. And your hormones are controlled by fats. Mm -hmm. And there's saturated fats, there's monounsaturated, there's polyunsaturated fats, there's your fatty acids, and this needs to be balanced too. Mm -hmm. You can't just eat saturated fats. Like a lot of people that are so gung-ho on only paleo will just eat butter and coconut oil and all these like heavy, heavy fats, saturated fats, and they'll kind of forget about the avocados and some of the nuts and sprouted nuts and seeds and some of these monounsaturated and some polyunsaturated. Whereas vegans, their whole day is polyunsaturated fats. Yeah. Some monounsaturated, of course there's olive oil, olive oil included in that, but mm -hmm. most of it's coming from, you know, some of these fatty acids, chia, some of these omega-3s that they're getting, mm -hmm. um, flax and stuff like that, but most of it's a lot of these polyunsaturated fats, nuts and seeds will take up the bulk of a lot of these diets mm -hmm. because they need substance. They need sustenance of the food or, or else they're eating these raw salads and never getting full, especially if they're having a lifestyle that, 
you know, it's not sedentary and they're moving and they're working out and stuff like this. Your body's constantly breaking down. You need to rebuild it with some more like anabolic foods as opposed to a lot of these catabolic foods, catabolic fats. And it just pushes you further and further out of balance. And the one thing that will take a big hit is the hormones because you're just pushing yourself more and more and more and more catabolic and your body's never really recovering. Mm -hmm. Not only that, but like you're not really getting that many blood building foods, exactly. which is major for women. And so once you start <clears throat> down this path, a lot of them will come to me later and be like, I don't get my period. That I'm, was me. I'm tired all the time. Mm -hmm. I'm freezing all the time. My hands and feet are freezing all the time. My libido's shot. Yeah. And they're like 20 to 25 years old. Mm. And it's like, you have so much compassion for this person at the time because they're, they're just not really understanding and listening to themselves and they're listening to other people, mm -hmm. tell them what to do. And so right away it's like trying to get that block out of their mind that they have to do this because it's this trend right now. Mm -hmm. And some of these celebrities that are so beautiful are doing this, you know, the juice fasting and <clears throat> a lot of these vegan type ideas. And eventually they get to a point too where they're like, oh my God, I just want some lamb. Yeah. I just want a steak. Yeah. And a lot of them are like, yeah, I see red meat at the store and I, it just looks so good. Yeah. Like I want it. Especially well, they when dream about they it. They dream about it, especially <laughs> when it's so cold. But they're like, it's so toxic. I can't eat it. Mm. And I'm like, no, like this is the, these are toxic meats. Mm -hmm. These aren't. These are the toxic ways exactly. of cooking the meats. These aren't. Exactly. And so it, it breaks it down and then they start to go, oh, wait, so I can do this, so I can do that. And they start to come out of this hole of like their, their mind, you know, their blockage of, of this. And, and it really starts to help them. But it, it, but it takes time. If, the longer you are set in your ways of, of pushing yourself out of balance with any kind of diet, the longer it's going to take to get back. So you really have to be on top of it afterwards. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. I was that person. Mm. I had the bad skin, no period, mm. and was tired, cranky, cold hands, cold feet sure. all the time. Yeah. And I was a vegetarian for five years oh, and a no. vegan for one. Oh wow. And no libido, nothing. <laughs> like I was just like cranky sure. and tired and so out of touch with my intuition, mm -hmm. like ridiculously. And it wasn't until I was at my wits end and someone who I admire suggested I try organic bone broth. And immediately I was like, who is this? They like yeah. saved you. <laughs> yeah. They wow. totally saved me. Yeah. And not only to mention that I had black circles under sure. my eyes and acne. Mm. And so, and my hair was falling out. Ugh. Yeah, it was awesome. All the, sim all the symptoms, yeah. Yeah, I looked you hot. All, you know, <laughs> you're totally all, hot. You totally had all the symptoms. Yeah. Totally. No blood left in your body. Nothing. Yeah. And so I started to add bone broth into my diet. Mm -hmm. And within two weeks, <clears throat> I started to feel better. Mm -hmm. I had more energy, more clarity. I was more grounded. And now this was like going on five years ago now mm. and I have never felt better. It's so amazing. So amazing and so strong within my body and in tune with my intuition. Sure. But we are conditioned from, well we have been conditioned from a young age to be scared of fats. Definitely. I mean the doctors from a young age, it's like our parents have ingrained this idea of heart disease in us. Yeah. That if we eat butter, heart disease, we eat eggs, heart disease. And it's like, eat egg whites, you know, yeah. eat margarine. And you're like, this, this is a, a food that's not full. And this is a something that's not even a food. Yeah. It's like a man-made thing. And, yeah. and we're going through our early adolescence eating a lot of foods that aren't really even food mm. because we're protecting ourselves from something that yeah. naturally in its natural state without it being pasteurized and, mm -hmm. and homogenized and put through these unnatural kind of situations you know the Amish country I mean I still get all my dairy from Pennsylvania and Amish it's literally gets shipped to me in Los Angeles and it's amazing mm. like the kefir you open up a, a thing of kefir and it like pops you yeah. like have to watch out it's mm -hmm. so effervescent mm -hmm. and it's just healing 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 food and of course you know if you have lactose issues even raw milk can cause some sensitivities. Yeah. So you really have to look at like, are you casein sensitive? Are you lactose sensitive? Mm -hmm. 
but when it comes to like some of these fats like butter or ghee, um, I like to turn a lot of my clients onto ghee. Right away, they feel the benefits, and yeah. ghee is, is clarified butter, so lactose, casein, and salt are out the window. You're not gonna get any of those when it comes to ghee. All the impurities are gone from, from the butter. So what you're getting is just these like deep-rooted CLAs, some MCTs, the butyric acid from the ghee that's gonna really kind of like start to heal mm. the body from the inside out as well as get the metabolism going as well as get your body into more of <clears throat> what I like to teach my clients is get yourself into turn yourself into a fat burner not a sugar burner yeah and once you can achieve this state of you know ketosis or ketosis some time of the week your body will respond so much differently mm -hmm. to energy and to brain energy mm -hmm. because um, I learned this from Dave Asprey. He's <clears throat> he's uh, just come out with a book too. It's his Bulletproof books coming out. Um, somebody that I work for on the side and get a lot of mentoring um, from. I was listening to a conference, and one thing that stuck in my head is he explained that it takes 26 steps in the body with the nervous system and everything going on to use a sugar in the brain. Wow. And it takes three steps to use a ketone, which is oh, from fat. Oh, wow. So it's amazing how people go right away after eating more like heavy fat diet. They're like, oh my God, I'm like turned on. My brain's like this, like that. I'm so much more focused. Um, I don't use um as much mm -hmm. as I just um, but he, <laughs> one of the things that he did in his conference, which was really cool, was he told us before it started that he wasn't going to use any pause words. And his, his, his speech was like an hour and a half. Uh -huh. And the whole time he didn't say, um, like, and, and, uh, wow. he just kept, because the triggers Focus. were working. And so it's almost as if you're ready to spit something out, the next word out. And this guy like lives off of fats. Wow. And he's lost a hundred pounds of fat sitting at a desk job. So. You know, there's a story to that, that of him biohacking himself, which everybody have, is gonna have a different story and their biological foundations are different. And I don't wanna tell people to go to the store and buy a bunch of butter and buy a bunch of eggs and just start crushing all that food mm -hmm. because we're all different, you know, and we all have organs that operate differently and the liver and gallbladder are so important for these fats to be digested properly. But it really goes to show that fat is our friend. We shouldn't yeah. discount, you know, fat and have these low fat diets because frankly, like all of our manifestations come from our brain too. So yeah. we're going to shut off all that yeah, and just be a dumbed down person to society. Like, you know, they want us to be exactly. So our mm. brains like 75% saturated fats mm. and it makes sense that we need it. We need it. So it's brain food. Exactly. It's fuel. Mm -hmm. Um, what would you say to somebody who has this conditioning that fat is bad? Like, how can they start to reprogram and not be fearful of it? That's a really good question. I mean, for somebody that is going through their their daily life of food and they're waking up to like like a green smoothie with no fats and they're having this like raw salad and they're having this this another raw salad and that's giving them the urge to eventually have a dessert because they're so hungry. And that's the next thing on the menu at some of these raw food restaurants, right? It's, it's looking, it's, it's getting them to understand the psychology of themselves yeah. and be like, how are your emotions? Mm -hmm. Checking in. How do you, do you stress a lot? Mm. Do you have flip out like PMS times? <laughs> yeah. Right. And like, and really get them to understand like, are they happy with this? Is mm -hmm. this something that they can live with? Are they okay with having these like crazy mood swings and their face breaking out every once in a while and not having libido and you know, going through their life kind of not having a voice that they would want to have. Yeah. And that power comes from those hormones, you know? And so a lot of people don't understand too that saturated fat in only 75% of the brain but it's the main propeller of, of our hormones. Mm -hmm. Saturated fat c converts to good, good cholesterol when you're eating the right good saturated fats, mm -hmm. which will increase the right hormones and help with 
your hormones that need to stay low, right? So in, in terms of men and women, they're different. But you know, for men, when I'm, I know when I'm eating a lot, a lot of ghee and like egg yolks, but I'm eating it at the right time of day and I'm keeping myself anabolic when I need to, my testosterone's through the roof and I feel empowered. Yeah. I feel like my purpose is there mm -hmm. and like I'm go-getting. Yeah. You know, and you just feel so much more confident and so much more strong in you and your ability. Yeah. It's the same thing that women can do. Mm. And they're going to feel more empowered by these types of, of diets and, to, and then also keep a balance of the two. I'm not telling, I'm not saying that raw vegans should just cut raw veganism completely. Like I have a couple vegetarian meals during the week as well. Mm -hmm. Two, three, four meals mm -hmm. of, of the week. Usually I'll have no meat and just have a vegetarian meal or just some like good slow burning carbohydrates to give my my you know cells a cleanse from high protein and mm -hmm. some of these fats mm -hmm. but then I get right back on the bandwagon because these my body just craves them yeah. it soaks up these fats and mm -hmm. and when I <clears throat> when I'm talking about fats I like to talk about the like ebb and flow of the Sun and the moon type fats mm -hmm. that to me will open and close your cells. And it's, it's getting like, I don't want to get too scientific with it, but we have fatty acids that open our cells. And when we eat these fatty acids, it gives us this like cellular energy. Mm -hmm. And then we have sterile fats that close our cells. And that gives us this grounding, recovery, rest, nighttime, sleep time, sleep deep, boost your growth hormone. The next day it's like, you wake up and you're like ready mm -hmm. for the world. And you go back to some of these catabolic fats again and you get the energy. So it's like having, you know, for instance, an avocado, olive oil, nuts and seeds, these are all catabolic fats. So having like a little chia seed, you know, pudding in the morning, you got some catabolic fats or having like cooked eggs, for mm -hmm. instance, is actually catabolic with the yolks, with like some olive oil, you're in balance with your like sun and yeah. ready for some energy. And then at night, like the geese, the, the, the egg yolks runny, or like raw, or some of these things, mm. um, are getting ready and closing. These are saturated fats that are closing the cells. Right. So once you start to do this properly, you start to feel like a superhuman because you're, yeah. you're in balance. Mm -hmm. You're not getting thrown off and you're staying in this like even keeled kind of gray area. And when you want to be this like light, you, you can, you have this like reserve energy to pull from mm -hmm. and give yourself an ignition or like, you know, um, I drink bulletproof coffee in the morning and you know, that, so that caffeine is kind of my ignition, mm -hmm. but it's also catabolic. So it's keeping me in that balance. Yeah. You know, that's why people sometimes will drink coffee all day long because it's opening the cells and giving them energy. Yeah. And as opposed to like, you know, something else that's really anabolic like they're not going to drink like coconut milk all day it's going they're going to feel like somber and mm -hmm. just like chill grounded mm -hmm. so it, it makes a lot of sense and when i learned all this um through some teachings with uh bio terrain assessment i was like wow like now i know how to make a very educated guess for myself yeah. on a daily basis of what i should put my body mm. as opposed to like just guessing. Yeah, or following what everyone else is doing. Following, craving. Yeah. You know, because sometimes we crave something. Like, for instance, a lot of women crave chocolate, which can be great if you're making your own chocolate yeah. and it's not super sweet and it's not with like these like cane, you know, cane sugars and stuff. You're not buying chocolate bars all the time. But they're really craving magnesium. Exactly. Because, you know, their body's so depleted of minerals mm -hmm. and magnesium being a major one for women. Mm -hmm. I have a lot of women actually supplementing like magnesium glycinate in the evening because they came from these raw vegan lifestyles that weren't supplying enough of it and eventually getting into areas where they're, you know, they were also, you know, their, their muscles and everything mm -hmm. were cramping up and minerals and blood building foods are, s minerals, blood building foods and fats for women and they like start to take over the world. Oh yeah, <clears throat> it's changed my life, those mm -hmm. three things. And also like something that's really affected me is cutting out sugar. Sure. And because when I first started on this journey, 
and I was so excited by the whole raw vegan thing and I would go and eat all of the raw cakes and just oh, yeah. overdose on it. Because it's and, like so good for you, Yeah, because right? it's like, healthy. It's, it's, it's real food. It's plant-based real food, right? But still, that stuff, it is loaded with honey or dates or coconut sugar right. or whatever right. the shops put in them. And for me, that was sending me, I was going crazy. Yeah. I was still a moody cow. Sure. You know? <laughs> totally. Because it was... And there's like trip wires going yeah. up all the time. And Your the nervous sugar... system's just like, yeah. what's going on? Exactly. The sugar ups, downs, yeah. ups, downs. Ups and downs. But it wasn't until I cut it out of my diet <clears throat> where I really started to feel freaking unbelievable. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about sugar for a minute. Sure. I mean, to, to begin with in, in the morning, like I, I talk to a lot of my clients and the first thing... They say, like, what are you waking up to in the morning? And they're like, oh, some berries and some granola and some oatmeal or, you know, or may, might just have, like, just fruit and some cantaloupe or something like that to just give myself some energy. And right away, I'm like, this is, this is an issue mm -hmm. because right away in the morning, you're boosting your, your insulin, you're, you're asking your insulin to work for you. Mm -hmm. And it's going to shoot up in order to digest these simple sugars. And eventually you're going to get to a point where it's, it's not going to work, want to work for you anymore. Yeah. On top of that, when your insulin rises right away in the morning, it keeps, it basically cuts and blunts your fat burning for like mm, a long time. Right. Usually most of the day for some people, some people that have like super fast metabolisms, at least half the day, but that insulin rises and fat, like the insulin goes up to meet those simple sugars and your fat burning zones down here. Mm. So like, once I start, because I used to do this too, I'm like, I, I have a college football background, all I thought about was starches. Mm -hmm. Like that's what I thought was going to give me energy all the time. So like of course oatmeal in the morning was like a staple with like French toast. Like it was like dining uh -huh. common. Like during football, it was just like whatever you ate, you could eat, right? Yeah. But eventually when I was done, I wasn't working out and expending all that energy all the time. I was like getting soft. I was like, what's going on? Like, this yeah. Is I don't like this, you know? Yeah. And when I started to do research, it's like, oh, I'm like not going to burn fat. Mm. I'm literally just burning off the energy that I ate. And then once that energy has gone, the body doesn't know yeah. what's next. It's like, give me more sugar. It needs more of that. Yeah. It's supposed to knowing, oh wait, I've been using fat as an energy source mm -hmm. most of the time. Mm -hmm. And now that it's gone and I'm just kind of ready for getting ready for my next meal, it's all, first of all, going to stabilize your blood sugar, which is massive for women. Like that's where you're going to freak out yeah. is when your blood sugar is out of whack mm -hmm. and you're like, give me my next meal. You will like kill someone. So something that was really profound for me was once I got all of the fats under control, I was still eating a lot of sugar. Mm. So. I was, I got so excited. I was raw vegan and I'd go to all these places and I'd just smash raw cakes and bliss balls and pies and oh, all no. this stuff. And I was, not only was I bloated oh, and, had, and had nut gut, we've all I been call there. it. Yeah, nut we've gut, all been yeah. there. And not only did I experience all of that agony when I was eating that, but sure. um, it was the sugar burning, constant sugar burning. and. You know, there's so much sugar in those things from the dates, from the dried fruit, from the honey, the coconut sugar. But people have this misunderstanding that it's good for you, those things. Yeah, the banana. I mean, it's like, it's loaded. Just, oh. and, and you know, like these are, some of these foods are, are from the earth and people will try to, you know, have a conversation with you and say, no, well, they're, they're natural. everything. This is all from the earth. It's natural. Well, yeah, it is, but there's something to the glycemic index and something to the glycemic load that it affects your blood sugar, your insulin, um, and it could really push you far out of balance. Yeah. It can cause a lot of issues um, within your gut, especially, especially with what you're saying. Like, you know, every once in a while, sure, I'll, I'll treat myself to something like that, but I know before I even go into it that there's a chance I might be like bubble guts and all of that. Like just because what's really happening in there is like you have a heavy amount of nuts and, and seeds and you before that had like a massive raw salad with tons of cellulose. And now you got the nuts and seeds and now you got the sugar that's going to help ferment it all. 
And so you're basically creating this like perfect fermentation crock pot in your gut. Awesome. Of a mess. Mm -hmm. So like of course like of course your intestines are going, what's going on? There's like this slow like gravitational pull of these like this kale trying to get through there, all this roughage that's trying to get I mean, we probably have roughage that's still just kind of chilling. Oh yeah. Yeah. And okay. that's fermented with sugars and it's still just kind of like creating this like candida effect. Yeah. That everybody's trying to get rid of. Mm-hmm. And the cleansing of this candida and everybody's thinking that they can cleanse it with these types of diets when really like I did the best cleansing it when I like cut a lot of my raw vegetables mm. in general and I was mm. cooking everything, but cooking it still like vibrantly, like yeah. slow cooking it yeah. using like a low temperature water, like good oils, good fats mm -hmm. that can be cooked properly with it. But it got to a point where like I couldn't do any of it. Mm. And I realized that like the combination was like the biggest issue. Yeah. And so I cut out this combination and I really cut out sugar for a while. Like you were saying you did. And it, it was a massive help. Oh, like yeah. every once in a while I still have these, um, like a couple times a week, I actually do supplement with a little bit of raw honey because mm -hmm. it can be very cleansing to the liver and it does some has some really amazing health benefits, anti-inflammatory and all that, and, and it helps to refuel glycogen that I'm not kind of heavily fueling with like a high carbohydrate diet. <clears throat> but in general, I took that whole idea of cutting out a lot of my sugars and I've replaced them with, you know, sugar alternatives <clears throat> that don't raise my blood sugar mm -hmm. and that are diabetic friendly. So anybody out there that's suffering with issues with diabetes and stuff and still relying on some of these foods, has a sweet tooth. Like I'm super pro on really good stevia. Yeah, and, that's my favorite. And birchwood xylitol. And those are kind of like the two things that I work with now on a regular basis. And I really like the combo together. Sometimes I'll just um, use stevia depending. Yep. But um, I've noticed huge changes in my body composition, in my mood. Um, in my sleep, uh, I've noticed that I, I don't get like antsy and everything's just more grounded. Yeah. And I, cause I still have a sweet tooth and my sweet tooth led me to like create super amazing mm -hmm. desserts yeah. like, on a regular basis. Which we've got two over <clears throat> there. So can you grab those for me? Yes. So you are, I want you to tell all about these cause I can't well, actually like. I have me... one of them. I have many, many recipes, but one, one here being um, a my chocolate chip cookie bar, and I am using. I also like to put kind of like my signature thing when I started making cookies in the first place. I'll just hold them. Was I? <laughs> I loved. I loved putting icings on them, and it kind of stemmed. Like, if I can be completely honest, I don't have any baking experience whatsoever. Mm -hmm. And I was creating like ice creams, um, like in the in the Vitamix, like superfood spirulina ice creams, and using just birchwood xylitol and stevia, creating these like amazing like peanut butter tasting ice creams with no peanut butter, and no aflatoxins. Just like then I started getting into the bulletproof products and was using like his his cacao and making these like awesome chocolate things and puddings and gingerbread this and eggnog this and whatever I could come up with oh my God. that was like my old like childhood favorite or dream like mm -hmm. my go-to always was like I've Reese's peanut butter cup Reese's peanut butter cup oh and I was like God. I'm gonna make my own I'm gonna make my own truffle I'm gonna make my own ice cream I'm gonna make my own whatever yeah. and then eventually it got to a point where it started to get cold mm -hmm. and that goes back to the weather changing mm -hmm. and I wasn't ice cream was like oh, yeah. my stomach Amazing for you, great ingredients, but my I would get bloated, mm -hmm. and I would I had a girlfriend at the time, and she'd be the same, be like we'd just kind of like sit around and be like, oh, it was so good, like, mm -hmm. but my stomach, mm -hmm. and she was like, why don't you try to make something warm, <clears throat> try to bake something, and I was like, well, yeah, I can, I guess I can try to do that, and like, yeah. I mean, I'm no Martha Stewart, but maybe like try something. Yeah. So I in my head, like I didn't really even look at recipes, I just kind of like took kind of like a proprietary blend that was in my head that was formed a base of a lot of my ingredients in the Vitamix and threw it together with some other things that I knew would bake well and just started kind of in a trial and error basis 
of making cookies to begin with. And they're super like floury, coconut floury at first and like kind of crumbly and not so moist. And so I was really also good at making like icings at the time. I would just make an icing and eat it. Mm. And so I whipped up this icing and I was really into colostrum, like raw grass fed colostrum at the mm -hmm. time. So it was like tablespoons of colostrum were going in, like collagen powders were going in, whey proteins were going in, and sweeteners and certain other fats that I would use. And I would just like whip up these icings and they'd come out so thick like these, like you just scoop them and it wouldn't even drip off the spoon. And so I would like take it and after a while we would just like lick the... Oh yeah. It's like forget about the cookie, it's not that great. Like mm -hmm. let's just get, the, get to the icing. Yeah. And then it was like this epiphany hit and boom, these things came out. And I swear to God, and I made a chocolate chip cookie and I, they came out and, sorry mom, but they were better than my mom's cookies. Oh, big call. Big call, but like, I look, we looked at each other in like complete <laughs> awe. And we're just like in this euphoria of dessert. Wow. And especially since we knew it was guiltless. Yeah. You know, our, uh, nothing happened to our blood sugar. We still felt the same. We actually got more grounded. Yeah. And you get this like warm, cozy feeling of having this, mm. you know, adolescent treat that brought back so many good memories yeah. that you kind of like a lot of us cut out because we're like, okay, no sugar. So no sweets. Yeah. And I was like, screw that. I'm having my sweets. Yeah. I'm going to create it. Yeah. And that's what I did. And it's evolved from that recipe to another recipe to finally I have like the blend that I can take and put it into a cookie. I can make a muffin and turn it into a cupcake. I can oh put it God. into a batch and make cookie squares like what I have here and just cut them up. You can use the same blend and not make it a cookie and just throw it in the Vitamix and yeah. put some coconut milk or some raw milk or whatever you like to use and blend up a smoothie. Mm -hmm. So. I've really kind of like came to senses with this um, kind of idea and I'm really stoked about the eventual presentation of yeah. it to stores and getting it shipped and um, it's amazing. It's like it's such a manifestation and I'm so yeah. grateful that it came through at that time yeah. and I'm also super grateful of having such an inspiration mm. in, in a muse that could, you know, because I think everything that is amazing comes from love and passion you're talking my language right mm -hmm. so like when you have an inspiration and you're like in love like you can really do anything and, and this totally. this is a, a creation of, of love for sure um, so you have the chocolate chip cookie bar and the I smell <clears throat> ridiculous this is a this is a probiotic uh, colostrum cream cheese icing well I just want to make it super clear for everyone. <laughs> this is not a high nut, high date, high cacao, <clears throat> high honey. No. This has nothing like that in there. It, it is another level. It's, it's another level and it, it, my motto is eat dessert, burn fat. And so. It, Can you tell them a little bit about some of the ingredients? You don't sure. Have to, no, don't no. have to like reveal your big secret. Right. Well. What we've been talking about before and this idea of ketosis and using fats for fuel as opposed to sugars is you start to push your body into a state of, of fat burning. Mm -hmm. you, you turn into a fat burning machine. So while you're this fat burning machine, why not still be able to have sweets that keep your body in fat burning mode? And that's, that's ideally what we want. Exactly. Yeah. And so that's what I've created is a sweet that doesn't affect your insulin. It actually supplies you with the right fats that still keep your body going, oh, here's my fuel source, here's my fuel source, it's fat, it's fat, it's fat. And it starts to kick you into this pattern of believing this is what I'm using for fuel. When it's out, this is the coolest part, when I'm out of this fat, and one of the fats in here is a medium chain um, triglyceride from a super high powered uh, MCT oil, coconut oil base that Dave has called Brain Octane Oil. And when you're pushing your body into this high state of ketosis, it starts to understand, this is my fuel, this is my fuel, this is my fuel. And then eventually, when that fuel runs out, because MCT will go pretty quick, it's awesome. It, it will never store. Mm -hmm. it, you, your body will use it as energy. Once it's out, your body starts to understand that it needs fat for fuel. And where's it gonna go? 
to your, your fat, your own stored body fat. Mm -hmm. And so that's the cool thing about it is it's not like a fat burning pill. It's not some type of like, you know, like high crazy stimulant that's pushing your body into a thermogenesis that it's not used to. It's really just training you mm -hmm. to use your fat instead for fuel, of the sugar to use this ATP energy from fat and get your mitochondria f fueled with the right source energy, not only for your cells to create this output of energy for like daily experiences, but for your brain. Mm. So you're always turned on. Yeah. And so when this is like in sync, you really can take on a lot. You can take on the world, like super stressful things will happen to you and you're like, okay, that sucked, but yeah, I'm here. Keep going. Yeah. This is where mm -hmm. I have to go. Mm -hmm. It's supposed to freaking out. Totally. And that's something that I noticed. I used to be so reactive. Right. And now dramatic things happen and I'm like, oh yeah, cool. Well, let's just do this. Yeah. You know, where I used to be like, oh my God, my life is over. Right. It's so dramatic. Right. So, you know. That's one, the thing. Exactly. One thing I wanted to say to you is, so when we get our body into ketosis, fat burning, fat burning, fat burning, if we do have sugar, it will remember that it's a fat burner. Is that what you're saying, or well, that's or what, it, that's is, where it's almost like you've undone all of your hard work. That's where the idea of like inter this intermittent ketosis yeah. is really important because our bodies, you know, just now we're pushing ourselves into a balance of only ketosis, yeah. a, a, an imbalance of only ketosis. So there is a place for some of these starches, right? Yeah. And it comes in this like kind of like carb loading glycogen boosting fashion. Yeah. And when you do this, the cool thing about it is it's been, it's been depleted for long enough that where does it want to go? It wants to go to your muscle source where the glycogen wants to refuel, mm. not to your fat. Mm. So you'll stay lean. You're, you'll get the energy that you need for your, you know, your, your body. And you'll stay in this, like you'll be able to go right back into more of a ketogenic fashion again and keep your brain locked in and everything. And, and some people that stay in ketosis long enough when they have some of these like simple sugars and carbs, they're like, Whoa, mm. because sometimes you can push yourself out of balance that way too. So you yeah. really have to watch it. Yeah. Balance, 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 moderation, balance, moderation. You know, you can't wake up to like four tablespoons of yeah. some type of fat yeah. if you don't digest fat very well. Mm -hmm. Some people are oxes and have these like crazy caged like digestive systems and they could do that. Yeah. And like a pound of meat and they're like, what? I yeah. feel great. Yeah. Well, most people don't. Mm. So you really have to look at balance being a key in this. Yeah. And that's basically, I mean, I have catabolic and anabolic fats in this. Um, it's a great source of protein fiber and there's a, you know, small, there's zero sugar and there's a small amount of carbohydrates that are actually being really nicely affected by these things like stevia. Because stevia can be really cool used with carbohydrates because what it does is it helps get your insulin to that point because it's still yeah. super sweet. So a super sweet stevia taste is going to raise that kind of bar going, oh, what do we need to, what do we need to digest here? Yeah. And if there's some, some carbohydrates in that, they're going to boom. Yeah. Be awesomely digested. And yeah. um, that's what a lot of people feel from these. Um, the digestion on them is great. I use uh, proteins in them that are easy, that, that can be cooked. Yeah. And um, I'm, I'm creating, every day I'm evolving, I, I, for those people that really won't ever get off the raw bandwagon, I'm creating, I'm dehydrating some cookies too. So there's, there'll be raw ones available, there's these cooked cookies that will be across the board and um, I'm, I'm really excited. I mean, Cookie Genius, I feel like will be a very big household name soon. Oh yeah, and the packaging and everything is just so beautiful. Yeah. And the thing that I love about you is that you know your shit. Thank and you. you're so well um, educated. And you have poured your heart and soul into this project. And the reason why I'm so drawn to you is because it's so authentic mm. and there's so much passion, there's so much love and there's so much knowledge. Um, you know, there's so many people out there that are just going and making raw this and raw that and whatever. And it's like the combination, sure. everything, the food combining, yeah. it's, it's not properly food, properly food combined. Yeah. So I am just, so excited for you to see what happens next yeah. and I can vouch for everyone here. These are freaking 
Awesome. They are so good. So, um, I think we should... We should have one, right? Cheers and... Cheers. Cheers to... Cheers? Cheers to cookies. Cheers to dessert. Cheers to Sugar, dessert. Sugar-free dessert. Yum. Oh, fuck. Mm. Oh, fuck. I got more cream than you. Fake cream. Whatever it's called. Little jelly. Oh, my God. Mm. My husband's gonna be really jealous. We should say, well... Should we save it? Uh, <laughs> <laughs>